just 21 days away from the biggest event in the FWA's 11 year history. But before we see some of the main stars of the FWA, here is a, a special guest match from XWA Adrenaline. Featuring Jack Gallagher and Zach Diamond, two of the hottest prospects here in British wrestling. Oh, hang on. Obnoxious director and Daryl Adler, and oh my goodness, the Bollywood dream RJ Singh is here. You know, I thought it'd be time to add a little class to these proceedings and add a little ethnic flavour, which is why RJ Singh is here right now. You see, I'm a guy who is all about the future. And since I have a match with the Rockstar Spud later today, I thought I'd come check out the future of British wrestling. Because let's be honest, guys, you are the people I will be stepping over in the future. So I'm gonna sit myself down with Dave Bradshaw and have a little commentary. So later on, 
everybody, yourselves included, you can all find out why Sing is king. Well, my day's getting off to a great start. Dave Bradshaw, your day just got a hell of a lot Good afternoon, Mr. Bradshaw. Oh, my goodness, is it? Why does that man need a megaphone? RJ Singh's joining me here at, at ringside. And Dave Bradshaw, it is your pleasure that I am here today. You know, I'm fine on my own, honestly. <laughs> well, as I said before, we were somewhat rudely interrupted. Jack Gallagher and Zach Diamond from XWA Adrenaline with a special guest match to get us started here on the road to Uprising this weekend. And Mr. Singh, you were saying just a moment ago, you think these are two of the guys who you're going to be stepping over. Hey, like, like I said, Dave, I am all about the future. For RJ Singh, it's always about looking ahead, not looking behind. And I see these guys, they're coming up through the ranks of British wrestling, and I will give them their credit. These are young guys, they're hungry, they want to be part of British wrestling, but they've got to admit, Dave Bradshaw, at the end, they are just going to be stepping stones for RJ Singh to climb even higher. Well, certainly you've shown in the the past few weeks just how uh, brutal how ruthless you can be and having stepping stones and people to step over i'm surprised you even have the, the gall to be out here after what you did to el Ligera at hope and glory and, and what exactly did i i do to el Ligero? you know exactly what you did el Ligero is suffering possible permanent eye damage after you stabbed him in the eye with a pair of scissors. Okay, Dave, right, let's clear this up now, okay? I do believe I cleared this up a couple of weeks ago on Frontline, but I'll clear this up with you again now. My intention was to go out and remove the mask of El Laguero. That is the one thing I have told you. Think back to New Frontiers. What was the thing I said I was going to do? I was going to destroy the visage of El Laguero. I was going to show you the man you underneath. destroyed the vision of El Laguero is what you've done. That, Dave Bradshaw, that was an accident. You saw it was an accident. Or was I the only person in that ring? No, you weren't the only who, person who in the else, ring. Who else was in that ring when the accident happened? Rockstar Spud. Rockstar Spud. Oh, so you're blaming this on Spud now? Well, let's have a look. I was trying to cut Laguero's mask off. While I was trying to cut the mask off, was El Laguero injured in any way? No. It was only when Rockstar Spud interfered, hit me from behind, that El Laguero's eye was accidentally, and I will reinforce that point, Bradshaw, accidentally damaged. Well, the fact that you brought a blade in and we're trying to take his horns off in the first place is a kind of a questionable motive to be in the ring anyway. But I think let's give this match the respect it deserves. You're seeing Gallagher there rolling backwards as Diamond comes off the rope with an arm drag into a pin. He arches forward. You've got two and a kick out from Gallagher for the last possible second. You must be a little nervous about the future of British wrestling. These two guys are pretty talented. Hey, I'll give, I'll give any wrestler credit where credit is due, okay? And these two guys, like I said, they're young, they're hungry, they're showing everybody here exactly what they got. But are they the next RJ Singh? Not likely. <laughs> so you'll give wrestlers credit where it's due, will you? Yeah, absolutely. I'll come down that in a second. There's a cover from Gallagher. Diamond reverses the pin. That leg locked. He's going for a submission hold. Gallagher is a little I bit think away he may from have the him. ropes. I think he may have him. Gallagher writhing in pain. You can see the, the expression on his face. Very painful hold. And right by Diamond, Gallagher gets to the ropes. But you see, someone like Jack Gallagher, he knows exactly where he is in the ring. He knew where he was to the ropes. That's why he was able to get that break, you see. I, I want to take issue with this notion that you give respect where it's due. When you've spent the past year and a bit tormenting one of the guys who's the most, one of the most popular and most talented Hey. Men in British wrestling, El Ligero. I will take nothing away from El Ligero's wrestling ability. However, does he deserve the fame? Does he deserve the credit he gets based on his wrestling? No, he does not. It's Why only because not? he wears the goofy mask, the stupid superhero image. Okay? I have never hidden who I am. I have never hidden who I am from anyone. The man hides behind a mask to protect his identity. What kind of a man cannot face the public to who he really is? <laughs> Yeah, says RJ Singh. Wow. Where is that uh, latest Bollywood movie? Uh, I'm not, uh, we're not here to talk about any of my latest movies, okay? If you want to have a conversation with the director afterwards about what's happening on my latest Bollywood film, which is being worked on at the moment, we can have that conversation separately, okay? I can't, I can't think of anything. Please be quiet. I can't think of anything I'd rather do less than have a conversation with your director. Hey, he's a talented man, okay? Very loud. Man. I would not win half the awards I have in India if it wasn't without this man right here, okay? And how many awards have you won? Numerous, Dave Bradshaw, numerous. Okay, yeah. Too many to count. Maybe later. 
Wow. Well, Gallagher during that little exchange. See, I'm liking this is what I like to see. You see, Jack Gallagher's on top of him. He's keeping his man down. He stays on top of him. This is the kind of wrestler I like to see. While we were bickering in the past couple of minutes there, at one point, Gallagher crawling under the ring and coming out the other side to surprise Diamonds. And great... See, now that's Innovative, smart. opportunistic that's Exactly, offense. opportunistic. No one is going to give you anything in British wrestling, right? Real power cannot be given, it must be taken, okay? And that is a motto I would live my life by. If you can't win it fair, stab your opponent in the eye. Oh, but, right, no, Bradshaw, how many times are we going to go? How many times are you going to keep slandering me with this I stabbed him in the eye? It was an accident. Hey, people can see the footage. They can, they can judge see for the themselves. Footage. Hey, show them the footage. It will show you that was an accident. Unbelievable. Gallagher tying up Diamond this time in a leg lock. Bit of payback for he's got a couple a, of oh, minutes ago. His shoulders close were count. down. Close count. Diamond with the, the awareness to force his shoulders off the mat just before the three count. But that's how Gallagher's staying on top of him. He's keeping him low to the ground. He's keeping him grounded. If you give someone like Zach Diamond a chance, he's going to be all over that ring. You've got to keep that kind of guy grounded. Gallagher certainly with a firm technical catch with catch catch background, trained in the snake pit so. in Wigan. Certainly putting some of that classical training tra to good use right now. He's got that side headlock applied, or well, not a headlock, it's a, a, a look across the chin, but he's taking the, either way, he's taking the airway away from Diamond, reducing the oxygen flow to the brain. You see him using his legs there for leverage on the pin, some real impressive stuff from Gallagher. So he needs to keep that cravat locked in, keep the guy's air supply from going down, you see he takes him down again. This is what you've got to do. See, so you get these high flyers, they want to spring about the place, they want to fly around the ring, you've got to keep them grounded. Gallagher now. Still trying to oh. Oh, wow, it looks like Diamond was getting to his feet. Gallagher in the end. I like this Gallagher. Improvising. Oh! I went for that. Went for it all in the corner and Gallagher landing hard on the, the back of his neck. That could be a turning point in this one. Both of these guys would be qualifying as flyweights today on the main FWA roster. Of course, uh, the final match in the FWA flyweight title round, Robin, coming up at European, up, uh, sorry, not at European Uprising, but in the near future between two of your rivals. Yeah, yeah. Stars, yeah, Spud yeah the and, final uh, that Storm. I'm not in, thanks to El Ligero. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, El Ligero. I think you're in last place in that league table at the moment. Yeah, should I be? No. Well. And to, be, to be fair, Dave Bradshaw, I should have been just awarded the flyweight champion. Okay? Do your history. Who was the first ever FWA flyweight champion? I know it was you. Exactly. So they should have just awarded me the belt when the FWA returned. Well, who was the first man to lose the FWA flyweight title? Very clever, Bradshaw. Very clever. Yeah. You're a very clever guy. I see what you did there. Oh. Oh. Drop kick as Diamond tries to go up top. That's it, you gotta keep these flyers grounded, man. You gotta keep these flyers grounded. Gallagher trying to hyperextend that arm. Diamond picking him up on his shoulders now. Great attitude. Oh, oh, XWA slams him down. Big spine buster. He's got the leg hooks as well, and he almost, almost got him. So impressed by these two. As we said, XWA Adrenaline, the official feeder group for the FWA. These guys are some of the best prospects, not just in Britain, but anywhere in European wrestling. And Diamond's about to show you why up the top. Oh, oh, and the knee beautiful up. maneuver by Gallagher. <laughs> oh, absolutely caved his chest oh, with those knees. You enjoyed that, didn't you? That was fantastic. That's a, this is a guy after my own heart. Have you heard of the term sadist? Sadist? No, never. Gallagher now. Well, Diamond didn't make it on his way to the top. Gallagher's going to try it himself, it looks like. Diamond doesn't know where he is. Come on, Gallagher, finish him. Taking those knees to the chest. Gallagher, up top. Oh, it's a oh. up from Diamond. Oh, I guess that makes him even. Yeah, Diamond's really fired now, huh? Here comes Diamond. Diamond through oh. the roof. Both men into the guardrail and colliding outside the ring. This one is picking up, and I think both men may have been knocked unconscious. Referee Chris Roberts has a count on. If he gets to ten, I this don't one's see the guy getting up. up. 
Well, we can't see them from where we are, but I can see a hand. The neither man really getting up. Diamond is just about there. He needs to get himself back in that ring quick. I think oh, Gallagher's got his leg, I think. Referee's up What's to nine, and there's ten. Ten, that's a double count out. Double count out, both men counted out, neither man returning to the ring. The you know, Bradshaw, my money was on Gallagher, and I'm very shocked that ended in a double count out. Well, it's unlike you to be wrong about anything. <laughs> it's very rare, Dave Bradshaw, mark this down as a day RJ Singh was not quite correct. Well, Gallagher's got a microphone, let's see what I say. This is Gallagher. First off, when they say the revolution and the future of British wrestling, it's not a gimmick, it's not a moniker, and you've just witnessed it here in this ring. And it's not you, it's me, lad. Because as far as I'm concerned, you couldn't beat me, which means you're not better than me. Simply, and I have to say it simply for you, all of you, I'm better than you. If I had a tag partner, if I had a tag partner, as my own so intelligent mind could perceive, I could see myself being thrown back in the ring, and I could see myself winning, and I could see you with a similar tag partner. Yeah, 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 that's really great. That's really, really interesting. <laughs> Very exciting, very interesting. But what the crowd really want to hear is some more words from RJ Singh. So you guys saw that, you little tag man. Go saw your little tag match out. Now on to more important matters. to far more important matters than two guys who may or may not be the future of British wrestling. Let's talk about RJ Singh and the Rockstar Spud. Now last time we were both here, we knocked each other pillar to post so badly the referee had to disqualify the pair of us. But that's not going to happen today. You see, I've got a few little key issues I need to work out with the Rockstar Spud. And quite frankly, I cannot wait until 2 o'clock to get it done. So I will be back here at 1 o'clock. And Rockstar Spud, if you can hear me, you best get yourself down here. Because I'm going to kick you all over the expo. And everybody's going to find out why sing. He's king! Well, he's never a man who's shy with a word about himself, is he? RJ Singh, the self-proclaimed Bollywood dream, challenging Rockstar Spud, one of his flyweight rivals, to a match later on today in just half an hour's time, here on the road to uprising. Europe. 
European uprising alongside his tag partner Marty Skull. They're still very much involved. And they're in the semi-finals of the tag title tournament. We we're expecting them to be, or we we're expecting Sabre to be facing Chris Travis today. You're looking wonderful. On behind the structure wonderful Dave my tag team partner Marty Skull isn't here. My opponent, Chris Travis, isn't here, it's a bit of a nightmare. But I know what's happening, I know where my tag team partner is. So I'm not going to stand for any more... Wait a minute. What's this That's about? Paul Tracy. Paul Tracy, one of the toughest fighters from Ireland, a man who has a, a long history with Zack Sabre Jr. They trained together back in the day. Why is Tracy here? So Zack Sabre Jr. Huh? I don't think I care much for you or your tag team partner or anything to do with this miserable country. Shut your mouth. Instead of talking about you, let's talk about me. A man who's flown here from Dublin, Ireland, who lives a lifestyle that you people can only dream of. Look at you! Have you looked in the mirror today? Look at you! And look at me! So all I propose to do, Zack Sabre Jr., is to beat you in the middle of the ring, give you the beating of a lifetime. These people can form a queue, starting with you, and I'll slap every single one of you around this ring. How about that, huh? Oh, charming. Paul Tracy, I'm assuming it's going to be Zack Sabre Jr.'s uh, opponent, his replacement opponent, in the absence of Chris Travis. As I said, Tracy and Sabre Jr. with a, again, a long and story. Second time in two you hours, he's interfered. Paul Tracy, you're my kind of guy, because you come into this ring and you take what you want, and I like that. Now I told each and every one of you I would be back here and I expected the Rockstar Spud to be here ready for an ass kicking. Now I know Rockstar Spud is in the building because I can smell his cheap aftershave. So Spud, I'm going to wait you out. I'm going to sit myself down on commentary and I will wait for you to get here. No, no, no. <laughs> Again. Why? Why me? Why me? Here we are. I've had nightmares more pleasant than this. Round two, Dave Bradshaw with the Crown Prince of Brollywood himself. Welcome back. <laughs> Again, Dave Bradshaw, it's your pleasure. You see the Rockstar Spud, he should have been here by now. I know he's here. You've got his stink all backstage and he's decided not to turn up. So I will simply wait it out, Bradshaw. And if that means I've got to sit here and commentate with you on this match, then that's what's going to happen. I mean, you really don't have to. There are options here. You can leave. No, no, but... Bradshaw, it's absolutely fine. I'm going to stay right by your side until the Rockstar Spud arrives. Oh, you're too kind. Zack Sabre Jr. Trying to escape this wrist lock early on from Paul Tracy. Two training together at NWA UK Hammerlock in Kent. Back around a decade ago, since then Tracy going on to be become one of the most feared fighters over in the Republic of Ireland. Absolutely, and you can't take someone like Zack Sabre lightly. I mean, that guy will kick your head off, I know that much. But Paul Tracy, man, look at what he's done today. He's come out, he wants to make a statement, make a name for himself. He's decided he's going to take on one of the best, and here he is right now. You know, what's interesting here is Sabre Jr. and indeed his tag partner Marty Skrull, the leaders of the new school, they went on a bit of a, a losing streak a few months ago here in the FWA and momentum is everything as you see Sabre Jr. taking the fight to Tracy with oh! those kicks. So Sabre's really going to want to win in this singles match as him and Skrull head towards the semi-finals of that tag team title tournament. Some stiff competition still involved there. Northern exposure for one. Sticks and Malin for another. All possible opponents. We're still awaiting the, the identity of the uh, the fourth semi-finalist. That's going to be a match. A I'm telling you, Dave Bradshaw, put your money on Sticks and Malin or on the agenda. Those are two teams 
who not only want to win the tag team tournament, they want to destroy everybody in their path. And I'm telling you, that's what it takes to be a champion in the FWA. That's a very uncharacteristic knowledge of anyone except yourself there. Well, hey, hey, I do my research, Bradshaw. I know about all the other wrestlers in the FWA, OK? I've been up against most of them, and I've beaten most of them as well. Okay? Well, you've interrupted most of their matches today. That's what the people want. They want to see more of these things. Oh! Yeah, you can tell by their reaction, eh? And there's the... Uh, Inseguri to the back of the head. Paul Tracy's wondering if he's back in Ireland. He doesn't know where he is. Sabre Jr. is working this crowd into a frenzy. Sabre off one rope, Owen. Right, Tracy smart moved. Man. Tracy is a smart man. He knew what was coming. And I tell you, Mr. Singh, that comes from uh, the long history these two have each other. He knows Zack Sabre Jr. very well, does Tracy. Saw that coming and telegraphed it. Absolutely. Tracy taking his time, very methodical style from this young man. See that, and that's a man who knows how to be a traditional wrestler. See, he gets the referee to get him into the ring. I've got to remember that one next time. Surprised Chris Roberts agreed to do that, but there we are. See, and now this is what this is it. This is what I was saying to you earlier, like we saw earlier on. You've got to keep your man down. Someone like Sabre, you let him stand up, he's going to kick you. So Paul Tracy's got to keep on top of him, keep him down, stay away from those feet. Well, I guess it's fair to say that the two main weapons in Zack Sabre Jr.'s arsenal are his kicks and his submission hold. So as you say, if you do take him off his feet, you take out half of his half of his offense there, really. Yeah, Zack Sabre Jr., he does not mess about with those submissions. He puts you in that arm bar. That's curtains, man. Cross arm break has already won Zack Sabre Jr. several matches. Singles matches as well as tag during the past, what, 15 months since the FWA was reborn. Memorable match against Joey Hayes, for example. Back in, uh, well, what, in November now? Yeah. Almost a year ago. A year ago, that match. It's a hot wired. Hey, do you remember what else happened at Hot Wired? Oh, that the first time you assaulted El Ligero. Oh, yeah, we took that mask apart. You thought you would have learned that time, wouldn't you? What you might have learned that time about having a bit of respect for your opponents. Has given Paul Tracy a yellow card, meaning his first warning. The yellow card to Tracy. We have a, a three card system here in the FWA, so three strikes and you're out. He's just had his first as he digs the back of his knee between the shoulder blades of Sabre Jr. Sabre, as we said, one of the real hot talents here in the UK. He's the, the featured one to watch in the upcoming issue of Fighting Spirit magazine. Really making waves on the oh. continent as well, regularly wrestling in, in Germany and Spain. That might slow him down. That cut him down, that cut him down. The director's very happy with that. He's a, he's a man of good taste, you know? He took me on as a young actor. He knows what's good for business, and he knows a man like Paul Tracy. I don't think I can do anything to you, Bradshaw. You can speak without a megaphone. I can hear you. I'm literally, what, two feet away from you. Ridiculous. Well, Sabre's rolling back into the ring. Tracy now planting Sabre on the, on the turnbuckle. What's he planning here? I think he's got some cruel intentions in mind with this one, Bradshaw. Yeah, come on, Tracy, finish him. Tracy, obviously, the, the older of the two men. You can see him sort of almost bullying Sabre Jr. That's what he used to do when they were training together. Oh, Sabre pushes him off, and now Sabre's on the top. Tracy landed on, his, landed on hard on his back, and here comes Sabre oh. with a missile dropkick from the top. Well, Tracy is out, and you've got to think this is Sabre Jr.'s chance to pick up a very impressive win against an international superstar. Sabre's got to get on him now. If he doesn't get on top of his man now, he's got to, Tracy's going to find a way back. Referee counting both men down. If he gets to 10 without either man on their feet, this will be a draw. Tracy is up. This continues. Here we go. Tracy, Sabre fighting back with forearms to the face. Sabre sends Tracy into the ropes. Ducks underneath oh. a big kick. Oh, there's those kicks we were talking Nearly about. Nearly took his head off for that one. Oh. Suplex arches through. Look at the flexibility of Sabre Jr. Sabre, what's this? Onto an abdominal stretch. So I'll say for Sabre Jr., he does not mess about in that ring. See how there's no wasted motion. Instantly going into that. And now 
using every available limb to increase the pressure. You see he's got his left leg wrapped around the head, digging his elbow into the ribs of Tracy, who's trying to get to the ropes. And at the last second he does, Tracy in a lot of trouble there and has probably exerted a lot of energy in getting to those ropes. Again, he's a good technician, Paul Tracy. He knows exactly where he is at any given moment and he knew he was near enough to the ropes to get out of that one. Tracy oh! doing the Irish whip. He's throwing Saber over his head. Absolutely rocked him with that suplex. Well, he thinks he's won it. Tracy with a big smile on his face. He hooks the leg and he only gets two. Took a little too long there, Paul. You're his personal coach now. Hey, a guy like Paul Tracy and a guy like me, we could do great things together. You know what I mean? A mind like mine and a mind like his, we could accomplish anything we like. We're very similar minded guys. Probably won a similar number of awards for your films as well. Absolutely. Yeah, and he's won none. I'm going to ignore that, Bradshaw. I'll say, but wrap him through. Goes for a, maybe a roll up here. He's got the cover, has he? Oh, he's got it. Saber from nowhere. Absolutely. That is not fair. Saber giving his credit. Here is your winner. I don't think my director's happy about it. Well, the director furious. I don't know why. Why he's so fond of Paul Tracy either, but there we are. A dub for Mac and Spot Talent. The crowd going wild for Zack Sabre Jr. as well, they might. Zack Sabre Jr. continuing to build up steam, build up momentum as the leaders of the new school head to European Uprising and the semi-finals of the tag title now tournament. excuse me, Brad, I have more business to take care of. Oh, please do leave. Sing's got a microphone again. We apologise for this constant interruption. I'm going to quite frankly, I think I've waited long enough. I did not come down here today to stand in front of a bunch of costume, comic book reading geeks. I don't have my match. I have waited my time. Rockstar Spun, get your ass out of here right now. Well, for the second time today, RJ Singh demanding the appearance of his rival. Oh, there's. Maybe we are going to see him this time. That's that somewhat butch security guard of Rockstar Spuds. A mysterious young lady. Well, the rock music is blaring. Security is in place, and there he is with a brand new haircut, fresh off his appearance on BBC Three's Not Marry a Boy, and just three weeks away from his ladder match for Johnny Kid, Wonder, sorry, Johnny Storms, Wonder Kid name. A European uprising, Rockstar Spud returns to the Expo to confront RJ Singh. Spud claiming he is the, the real Wonder Kid of the FWA. Well, we'll find that out at the Birmingham NEC in three weeks' time. The rights to that name will be hanging above the ring as he faces his rival Johnny Storm. But a, a rivalry of a different kind here. We'll start with that flyweight title round robin for him. Spud and Singh failing to curry this quite dramatically last time we were here at the Expo. And if that ended up with a... A single match that got so brutal that both they were disqualified. One of the most memorable moments from last time we were here. And just an absolutely visceral hatred exists between Rockstar Spud and the Bollywood Dream. Give me the mic, dickhead. Hey, RJ Singh, you might think these people are coming from Now I know you're here to have a match with a rock star spot, but one problem, pal. You see, the one that keeps on his storm has injured in my neck. And I'm afraid to say that the rock star can't compete for all his fans here at the expo this evening. But, you see, you've given me an hour, RJ Singh, 
day, I work for my day, because I'm the rock star spud. If you give me one hour, I'm going to find somebody that will step into this room with you tonight, and I think everybody here in the Expo will agree, they want to bend you over, pull down your pants, and slap your ass on over the Expo. You give me one hour, pal, and I guarantee you, you're only halfway there to get the beating of your life. It looks like Singh's agreeing to the challenge. Rockstar Spud saying he's still having neck issues, which I find a little bit bizarre. He's wrestled several times since well, Johnny Storm injured his neck. Come on, take your boyfriend, take your dad. Come on, dickhead, off you go. These people are bored. Boring, boring. Oh, the crowd are voicing their opinion very... Uh, Tired, I think, of RK Singh. You see, as the Pied Piper of the Expo, I'm not just going to stand around injured, I'm actually going to walk around in front of all you people. I'm probably going to, cameraman, get up here, get up here, get up in the apron. Everybody say hi to the Expo and the FWA! So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take me a cameraman, I'm going to be jumping in there with you guys, Spot promising to go and interact with the Expo crowd here. That didn't go well last time, but, well, you know, maybe it'll work this time. Who knows? Spud last time, if you remember, quite badly insulting the Super Mario Brothers, among other things. God knows what'll happen when we unleash him on the Expo, but the, the bigger story here is what Spud had to say to RJ Singh. Spud claiming he's unable to compete I'd say maybe a, a slightly dubious claim, but I'm prepared to take him at his word. I'm prepared to take anyone at their word if they're fighting against Singh. So in an hour from now, RJ Singh against an opponent of Rockstar Spud's choosing as we continue on the road to Uprising. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing at this time, he is the Bollywood dream, R.J. Singh. Part of the FWA resistance movement. Now, I know you've all been waiting oh. for the next thing that I'm going to say. Now, I've been here long enough. And I think we need to get things rolling. So Rockstar Spider, I gave you your hour. I told you to bring me somebody. So get out here now so I can get this over with quickly. Well, Shah, you weren't out here earlier, but as RJ Singh just said, he's uh, challenged Rockstar Spud. Spud said he's too injured to compete, but he's going to provide an opponent to take on RJ Singh. Well, there's a lot of talented boys in the back. I'm sure someone's going to take him up on his offer. A lot of guys, I think, who want to get their hands on RJ Singh as well, after what he did to El Ligero. Oh, mate, he, he, a lot, he's got a lot of explaining to do. He's a, he's a mug, like I said before, and no one likes him. There she is again, the security woman. That's one big bird, isn't she? Certainly is. He's my small fella as well. <laughs> You're very articulate, you know, well, I mean, I, I, it's quite to the point, mate. Well, Spud has a microphone. RJ, RJ, you, you're doing it, you're doing it again, you're doing it again, I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times, and I can hear the crowd saying it again. Boring, boring. <laughs> He's right, mate. RJ, just face it, mate, everybody here at the expo thinks you're a knob. <laughs> And believe it or not, I asked everybody, every one of the wrestlers backstage, and they all want to kick your ass. Should have asked me. There's one lad that came to me, and he, and he said, 
Stop, stop, please give me the chance, please give me the chance. Because last time here, you beat him here at the London Expo. So everybody, I want to introduce to you possibly the best up and coming high flyer here in the United Kingdom and the FWA. He's from Devlin, his name is Nick Riley. Oh yes, oh, wow. oh my son. I like this boy. A lot of prospects. Big prospects. Yeah, Nick Riley has been making a name for himself. Mainly, oh, son. Well done. Mainly uh, a star of XWA Adrenaline, but recently been stepping up into the main FWA roster. Oh, so he's helping out the resistance, you know what I mean? He's picking it up a bit. He ain't scared of the agenda. He's picking it up the resistance, I'll tell you that. He ain't scared of nothing at this point. I like him. Yeah. Can't have his beer, but I like him. I thought the beer was quite strong down in Devon. Well done, no, we can't earn it this one. Well done, Nick. He's going to do a good show tonight. He's one for the future, this boy. Certainly when the FWA was down in Devon, we did a show at the Timberton over the summer. Nick Riley was there, backing you up. Yeah. Oh, oh. This has no, to be some again. kind of colossal joke. Because if my memory recalls, Nick Riley, the last time you came to the Expo, RJ Singh beat you one, two, three. Seriously, Spud, this is the best you could do. With one hour, one hour I gave you, and this is the best you can do? Serious? Seriously. Okay, you know what, you know what, you know what? I will wrestle Nick Riley, I will wrestle Nick Riley. Because you know why? Because you have more chance of having a number one hit single than he has of beating me. I like Spud singing, I don't know what the problem is. And, uh... Unlike my guy Spud, uh, you don't have a manager's license, and neither does your bodyguard. So in fact, for this match, you can't even be out here. So why don't you run backstage and find yourself another little job to do, and go run your big mouth somewhere else? Bye. Well, Singh is saying that Spud needs to leave. I don't know if referee Chris Roberts is going to enforce that or not. So to be fair, you got to go by the rules and Spud ain't got a manager's license. So that is right in that respect. You're a stickler for the rules today, are you sure? Well, you know, I got told off for not having a manager's license once, so you know, it's only fair, isn't it? you got to pay fair by the rules. Seems still a mug though, don't worry about that. I'd like to know if this director or Daryl Amway, I've never them got a manager's license. I don't know his name, he's just a big boy and he, he takes up a lot of room backstage. Well, Got on. Throw. well, there is Amwar getting in what the face of Riley early on and Singh taking advantage. That but... ain't right. Go on, Nick, son. Go on. Ah. <laughs> See, that was very smart play by uh, RJ there, you know what I mean? He's using these uh, little uh, baggage handlers to his advantage, which ain't right. But, oh, there you go. Nick's going to... Oh, yes! Yeah. Spinning heel kick from Riley. And Riley scoops up Singh, this youngster is flying here! Knee drop across the jaw! That's it, I told you this guy's got a lot of prospect. Nick Riley is one to one. I'll take your shot, if he wins this one, he's got to think it's the biggest victory of his career, right? Oh, hands down, it'll be the biggest victory of his career. The thing, he needs more confidence in this boy, because he's... Oh, come on, Nick. You're better than that, mate. The thing is, right, Nick Riley, he's stepping up with the resistance against the agenda. We need him to get some confidence in the victory over RJ would be perfect. You know, as I was saying, Riley was had your back in Tiverton when the agenda attacked you and Leroy Kincaid. He certainly got courage. Mate, yeah, he stepped up to the plate. There was no Terry Fraser that night. I'll tell, you know, he weren't allowed in the building. But Nick Riley stepped up to the plate. That's what I like about Nick. Nick, he ain't scared of nothing, mate. He ain't scared of nothing. Of course, RJ Singh, was, as I found out earlier, is still a little bit irritated that he's been eliminated from the flyway title round-robin tournament. And Shah, you're still hanging on in a, in a tournament. Just by a thread at the moment, got a quarter-final rematch. You and Terry, right, the cartel, yeah. against the agenda right here tomorrow. Well, I'm going to tell you what, tomorrow night, the agenda will take on the greatest tag team in Europe today, the cartel, and the cartel will be the FWA tag team champion. That's what I'm going to say right now. Let's Wait. not talk about that. Let's talk about this. Sound like you're, you're very focused ahead of that match. Just yeah, in the zone for that, mate. In the zone. Sing goes to the ropes and gets... Drop you. Riley is really holding his own. I told you, mate. I told you. People, people don't talk about Nick Riley as much as they should. I'll tell you what, he's definitely one for the future. Look at RJ. Experienced guy like him. Look at him. He's on the floor and he's back. There's a cover. Good instincts by Riley to hook the leg, get as much leverage as he could on the pin. Mate, I, I, can, see, I can see Nick doing this. Go on, Nick. 
Because let's not forget, Anwar and the director are still at ringside, so it's almost a handicap match here. Well, he's got he's got support from all these people at the expo, I tell you that, they make a difference. Oh, my, well, that yeah. could be all, look at that. Singh turns Riley inside out with that clothesline after that knee drop. And Riley looks like he's, he's completely feeling, out of yeah. it, isn't he? This ain't good, this ain't good. Now, look at this from Singh. Singh choking Riley. Completely illegal. Referee Chris Roberts is getting in That's there. That's a joke. The referee's a joke sometimes. I tell you, I, I. And now, Anwar just continuing to choke out Riley. He's a bird, that little man. Uh, the director gets in a little shot. Look at how pleased the director is of himself for getting a little cheap shot in there. Oh. He should be happy with much. He looks at himself in the mirror in the mornings. He's got to be disappointed, so he's got to be happy in this environment. You know, he's got a little microphone. Thinks the bee's knees, doesn't he? That's your theory on him, is it? Yeah. Yeah, ain't nothing. He ain't the dog's dandies, mate. He ain't nothing special. Sing trying to wear Riley down. As you said, Shah, Riley's strategy involves heavily, you know, relying on, on the, the top rope moves, the high flying stuff. If, if Singh can keep him grounded, try and cut off that oxygen supply to the brain, that could be the key for oh. RJ Singh. I, I think that's it, mate. I think that's it. My God, Riley's neck just cracking that to one not side. Good. See the angle of his... Oh, mate. And Singh... Too much waffle. He will talk too much this boy. Never short on confidence, is he? He got have confidence, but he's overconfident, and that can backfire. Well, the self-proclaimed movie star heads to the top rope. Oh, Riley! Desperation well times well for Nick Riley. So I thought it was all over for him, but he's strong. I thought this boy's got character. This boy has got heart. This boy sees an opportunity, he takes it. What's Riley doing now? Riley! Oh my! Oh, a runner from the top rope! Jesus Christ! Sing bail to the That's outside. It. I say he bailed, it might have actually been momentum that took him. Well, well, so he takes too much risk now. Oh wait, Riley! Riley's on the top again! Oh my and god! Riley! Nick Riley! My god, a, Nick. a 450 from the top! I've onto never the... seen that before, I've never seen that before. Sing on the, the hard concrete floor. Oh, well done. I've been around the block a bit and I've never seen a guy take a 450 from the top to the outside, Dave. I've never seen that, and I've been around a block a bit. I tell you, this kid has no fear at all. What does it take? You could end your career in an instant trying a move like that. He couldn't have him. I tell you, Riley was just a, a half second, a quarter second maybe away from the biggest win of his career. Riley trying to get this Expo crowd behind They're him. They're up for it, mate. He's got a lot of supporters now. He's made a name for himself. Riley into the corner, Singh going to follow him in, nobody home. There we go, go on Nick, slice, bread, brother, well done. That's it now, don't even tell you. Is this it, is this it? Are the oh, directors on the apron? How many times, how many times is that man going to be allowed to interfere in RJ Singh's matches before FWA management takes some action? They got a have his license for a boat, I'll tell you. That's... Oh, what oh, a super kick. Singh, I think, was going for Bollywood Dreams, trying to take advantage of the distraction. Oh. It's a rolling thunder from Riley. Riley, up, spins round, this and guy, nails this Singh. Guy. I'm telling you. Is this it? Oh. What, why, mate? This is, this, I'm out of breath. I'm not even resting. I'm in my, I've got to throw me out of here. I'm sweating here. It's a strenuous job, this commentary, Shark. Mate, I've got a new respect for you, Dave. You know that? Well, Ooh. thank you. I tell you, I'm working my heart going. My heart is going. Riley has Singh on the ropes. Oh, now this one wants to go, does he? Punch, that's it, son! Oh, and what? Oh, 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 no, 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 no! That's a disadvantage for all the people around ringside, I tell you. Backcracker on Riley. This kid was just moments away, probably from the biggest win of his career, and it looks like Singh has ended it all. he got a big muggy bear on his little microphone gimmick, just like giving it all the big and now. Oh, Sing going for Bollywood yeah, dreams. What's that going on now? Well, that's, that's 
I don't like he's losing. I'm now sick of it. Well, why is it? But he hasn't won yet. Whoa, whoa. O'Reilly! Roll up O'Reilly! Two and three! Oh, yes! yes. yes. Riley oh, beats Sing! Riley beats Sing! Oh, oh. Unlucky Sing! Sing. <laughs> you must pick Riley! My God! Oh, that was brilliant. That's why he's not in the Parliament tournament anymore. That's why he is a mug. He's too overconfident. Shame! Well done, Nick Riley! Well, RJ Singh is indeed out of the flyweight title tournament, but the man who just beat him is arguably a future FWA flyweight champion. Oh, uh, well, I'm so happy. Unlucky, you mug. Unlucky. <laughs> well, it's hard not to smile. I'm having quite fun doing comedy today, if I tell you that. <laughs> smile plastered across my face. I feel a little bit unprofessional. It's uh, supposed to maintain impartiality here, but it's... I know, wow, well, Singh wants to talk again. No, 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 no. This is not how this is supposed to be. I am king! shaking in his boots, believe me. And Nick Riley, I'm not sure he can even believe it, but what an incredible effort, quite aside from oh, how Nick. this one ended. Riley with some high-flying, death-defying moves to beat RJ Singh. Everybody's talking about it. All over the world. Fan sites, newspapers, magazines. It's being talked about everywhere. There are two factions in the FWA, those who remain true and loyal to the FWA and those who are quite simply using the FWA for their own purposes. I'm talking about the agenda. These people have their own agenda, they're led by Dave Morales. He says he's using the FWA as a stepping stone to go to America, to go wrestle for the big wrestling companies as he puts it to perhaps get into Hollywood. However, we have a resistance. Thankfully, we have a resistance. And they are led by a man who flies the flag for British wrestling, who flies the flag for the FWA, and believes in everything that's good about the FWA, ladies and gentlemen. You might have heard of him. If you haven't, you'll have heard of him after today. He's a great wrestler in himself. Ladies and gentlemen, he's our special guest at this night, at this time, and he'll be joining Dave Bradshaw for commentary during the next contest. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Leroy King K. <laughs> He is the leader of the resistance and the man who we are expecting to face, Martin Stone, for the FWA World Heavyweight title three weeks from now at the Birmingham NEC European Uprising. He is Leroy Kincaid, and I'm pleased to say he's going to be joining me on commentary for this six man tag team match. Let me hear that one more time, Ellie Burris. This is me, and this is your 
Leroy Kincaid as ever focused as he heads into European Uprising. Leroy, it's a pleasure to have you here. Pleasure to be here, mate. Pleasure to be here. Right, I'm going to give my swagger back on. It is in tag team match. Introducing first. Challenge Diamond to go and find himself a tag partner. He's found himself one, and well, what a tag partner! Yeah, most definitely, mate. And he's look like he looks like they get on the treadmill a little bit, bro. You know what I mean? The size of that guy. Yeah, he's a big guy. He's a big guy, but I don't know. Let's see what he can bring to the plate for real. Apparently, a combined weight of 42 stone, at least 32, and that's got to be Richter. Most definitely, mate. Most definitely. He looks like he's packing a little bit of weight. Yeah, this is what I like to see a bit of uh, resistance up in the building. So Zach Diamond has chosen an actual race, the winner of the 2009 Scarlo Scholarship, presented by the British Wrestling Council. A great choice by Diamond. Most definitely, mate. I mean, what I'd like to see right here, right now, is some young blood up in the building, showing love for the resistance, keeping everything on lock right now. Younger talent like that are what's going to make this country stand up on the map for real. Well, it's interesting you bring that up, Leroy. I want to ask you about whether this country can stand up in the face of that ever-increasing menace that is the agenda. How, how do you feel things are going in that war? Um, I mean, one thing I always say is money talks and, uh, you know, the rest walks, right? And I just think that, like, the resistance has got so much love right now going behind it. Your boy Kincaid fronting it. Um, everyone else is showing love in the locker room. I mean, let's be honest, right? Um, the agenda is just nothing but a bunch of school bully playground guys just wanting to try and beat people up for whatever they want to believe in or whatever. You know, we're real people trying to keep this shit Pardon my French, right here real, and your boy Kincaid is here to get the job done. And Diamond is in there at the moment against Richter. He's trying to shoulder block him off his feet. I think that might Ooh. be unsuccessful. I mean, not a good move trying to go for a shoulder block there. He's definitely giving about, what, 20 plus stone off to that guy. I think Diamond might need to change strategy. Jeez. Well, and the strategy he's chosen is to tag out. Taking out, taking out, it's all right, it's all right. Might not be a bad idea against this guy. Most definitely be interesting to see what my man here's got to bring. Wicked, nice forearm there. You know, Leroy, another one. What's striking me about you today, Leroy, is uh, we're what, just three weeks away from European Uprising, the biggest event in FWA history and the biggest match of your career, a rematch for that world title, and you seem actually remarkably relaxed. You know what? I'm one of these people. I'm a man of very few words. I don't worry about talking. I just walk exactly what I've got to bring. So if any time people think, oh, it looks a bit too calm, it looks a bit too quiet, don't worry, because your boy is in control. Oh, oh my God. And my man looks like he's out of control right now. <laughs> you see that Richter just yeah. avalanching oh Axel Rage in the corner. I actually saw the ring move a couple of inches to the left from where we're sitting. That's what caught my eye, mate. The whole ring shifted about almost a foot, I'd say, on that. Jeez. Richter tagging in Gallagher. 
Gallagher and Diamond going to a double count out earlier. That's what set up this tag team match. Yeah, I didn't manage to catch too much of that earlier on. So what happened with that? Well, both men uh, ended up on the outside and, and Gallagher claimed after the bell that if he had a tag partner to throw him back in, he would have gone on to win the match. This is how we ended oh. up where we are now. Oh. Look at Gallagher. <laughs> Powdering Diving straight out. across the ring. <laughs> easy, mate, easy. Your mama call you, man. So Richter back in, this time against Diamond. Diamond not very successful against him last time. No, no, no. He's, he looks a bit calmer now. He's got a bit more swagger about him, so I think he knows what he's doing. Oh, he's tagged back out. Okay. Interesting. I know, I know you know, I want to go back to this. I know you said you're a, a man of few words, but I was, I was wondering if you could give us some sense, if you can find the words, as to what it would mean if you were to win your first ever world championship at European Uprising. Um, I think right now the word would be just ecstatic because it's been such a long, long road with this resistance versus agenda line. I mean, it's been a very long time coming and I believe a shift is about to happen. And I think that definitely 100%, if I won that title right now, I'd have to run around and scream in front of all these people because it would just be amazing, you know. Everybody here is standing up in something they believe in, um, especially yours truly, you know. Nobody wants it more than me right now. In a way that the stakes are actually higher than a world title match, because these guys from the agenda have shown on more than one occasion they just don't just want to beat you, they're looking to end your career when, when you head into Birmingham. <sighs> I, I mean, that's the thing, mate, it's like, you know, we can all run around like a pack of dogs and bully people and beat people up and do this and do that, but when we get them one-on-one, -on -one, we see exactly what they're made up of, which ain't much, mate, ain't much at all. Do you know what I mean? Their strength comes in numbers. As soon as we break down them numbers, their days are numbered. For I, mean, real. I mean, yeah, true. I mean, like you, you've what you've speared and pinned Martin Stone recently. You've speared and pinned Dave Morales, Joel Redmond. Yeah, I mean, the only one you haven't so far is Justin Reed. But again, none of this happens when they're fighting in numbers. So what are you going to do in Birmingham to get Martin Stone on his own so you can beat him? Do you know what? I ain't going to say too much because I don't want anyone to try and get any of my ideas. But one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my A-game 120 plus percent with my swagger. And that's all I'm going to do. I want to come in there. I don't really want to say too much to anyone. I just want to get in there, get that belt, slap Martin Stone around the face, slap Justin Reed, slap Dave Rally. I don't really care how many of them is there is. I just want to be that one holding that belt at the end of the night. So I don't want to say too much right now. Sorry, Bradshaw, but I just want to make sure I get in there, get the job done, stand it. But you seem to have a plan, even if you, you won't tell us what it is. And it looks like Richter's plan and Jack Gallagher's plan is going very well at the moment. They've got Axel Rage. Oh, oh. Well, maybe not. No. Rage moves out the way. This could be the chance he needs. Indeed, it is. Tags in That's Diamond. It, Another one. What? Some of that. Nice, nice hits here, mate. Big drop kick there from Diamond to Gallagher. This rivalry yeah. between these has been going on all day. I went for uh, Inseguri. Did he get him? No, he didn't. Gallagher blocked it. You know, I couldn't actually see there because my view was blocked by Richter. <laughs> same here, mate. I'm sitting in the same position as you, and it's just all I'm seeing is a nice big. 20 plus stone of oh backside. Oh, you see that DDT from Diamond Ooh. on Gallagher. Landed hard on the ring apron. Both men outside. Well, these two have already been counted out against each other once today. Is that right? Meanwhile, in the ring, Rage and Richter. Rage still trying to find oh, a way. Oh. oh my goodness. Richter just picking him up and slamming him down. Rage is. Over 200 pounds. Most definitely, man. He, he picked him up and threw him down with some velocity, I'll tell you there. I mean, Richter is over twice 200 pounds, I would think. <laughs> yeah. What's he to doing now? Up to the top. Richter is oh. going to the top. I mean, I know these young guys from XWA Adrenaline are trying to impress here in front of this Expo crowd, but I don't think he's very comfortable up there and he's got caught. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wicked. Well, well, luckily we still have a ring intact. Richter taking down nice. a super nice. kick. Nice. Come on, capitalise off of that. Come on, guys, do something. Ah, oh, just rolled it off. Well, they've taken Richter out of the game. Maybe they were going to try and focus on on Gallagher. They need to get him back in the ring. That's what Rage is trying to do. 
That's it, roll him into position, you know, there we go. I think when you're a man the size of Richards, once you're down, it's quite hard to get back up. Most definitely. Oh, nice. That splash from Diamond. Get on him. That could be it. Cover, One. got the leg hooked, and he's done it. Yes. Zach Diamond with a big win. Big win right there. Younger blood up in the building. Ladies and gentlemen, the winners of the Nuts match. Said. Zach Diamond Gibson and the natural born superstar, Axel Ridge. So Diamond and Rage victorious. And with the pin on Richter, and we wouldn't have seen that coming. Well, Leroy, it's been a pleasure to have you here today. And you know everyone is behind you as you head into... These guys well, again. All right, that's the agenda music. Resistance is futile. These guys just don't give up. What's this now? Wow, they... Is this another little one of their twists and their master plan or something? Gonna see Vince McMahon stroll out or know, this, whoever this, else stroll out. This mind games, there's no one no one coming through the through the curtain here. Oh here we go, oh, here we go, here we go. Morales, Reese and Redmond. This is the agenda. They look very much as though. The World Heavyweight Champion Martin Stone is conspicuous by his absence. Doesn't want to be anywhere near every, him by the sound of it. Every single place or anywhere I go, I'm hearing this agenda. I'm so incredibly sick of it right now. The fair ones have an agenda. Maybe this agenda can... Be put, in, put in his place, Leroy, if you can get the job done in Birmingham. Get the job done. Get the job done, mate. That's exactly what I want to do, get this job done, because I'm tired. I'm absolutely tired of this right now. Yes, in Reese with a slightly poisonous looking glance over here a second ago. Yeah, mate. He can go for it all he wants, but one thing I'll do is slap that smug smile off all their faces. <laughs> well, I know there's a reason why only you people out here are looking at us like we're different. The truth is we are different. And it's not just because we're the only three people in this building with girlfriends. But it's because we're the cream of the crop. Ask your sister, what? fat boy. We you are bad, the cream man. of the crop, as I say. Look at me and like you that, you're not punching like that. Joel Redman and Yeston Reese. They could be having the night off. They could be having the whole day off, relaxing, getting prepared for tomorrow. But you know what? They're feeling confident. And so am I. That's why you two hey, 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 hey. have just earned yourself a Don't shot even victory. think about Don't even think about you it, guys. You two have got yourselves the chance to be part of the resistance. Well, hang on. Morales is asking Diamond and Rage to... But you two can stand up to join the resistance. The fight against the agenda. And Joel Redman and Yestin Reese are quite happily going to let you have that chance. So we'll let you get your collective thoughts. And right now the agenda's going to have a little warm-up match for tomorrow night. Well, this is ridiculous. Wait, this is completely unfair. These guys have just wrestled. Quite aside from the fact that they're far less experienced than Redman. Cheap shot there. Obviously run, out of, obviously run out of razors in Devon recently. Yeah, definitely. See, what I don't get about these guys, all they do is just walk out, say the same old thing and bully people around. What? My morality is looking... Uh, all Leroy. you guys do is just talk. Leroy, you know I'm on your side in this. I think if these guys come, in, come over here, you're on your own. I would suggest no. you don't... I, don't know, I would suggest you don't go anywhere near them. There's three of them, one of you today. Well, mate... They got their strength in numbers, I've got mine in my heart. I don't care until every last beat and heartbeat, every last breath I draw, I ain't gonna stop. Never. Well, true, that is true, but also remember the best way to beat these guys is if you can become world champion. The only way you can do that is if you're in a good enough shape to wrestle three weeks from now. You just 
think carefully. I mean, again, you know, as I said, man of many words, I am very much not. You know, I'm not foolish enough just to run up in there and get my head kicked in, but you know, definitely I'm holding, holding some emotion right back at this moment in time, I tell you. Well, we've been having a lot of fun here at the Expo so far today, but let's see, the atmosphere has took a, a very sinister turn with the arrival of the agenda. Reese and Redmond scheduled to have a replay of their tag team title tournament quarter-final tomorrow against the cartel. Obviously, decided to have an impromptu warm-up match here. Yeah. I'm not sure Diamond and Rage had much say in whether they were going to compete. No, obviously not. It's the way the agenda works, you see. You know, they just walk in, stroll in, bully people about, tell them what they're going to do and how they're going to do it, and that's it. You know? That's all right. They're going to have their, they're going to have their card marked very soon. Redman really doing a number on Rage. Morales continuing to linger in a sinister way, quite near to this commentary table. Phil having caught in the crossfire here. He can look all he wants, and you as well, Yestin. Just get yourself back on that match. The agenda's corner happening to be the one nearest to us here. They're just a few feet away. Redmond screaming in the face of rage. Just trying to mock the guy. It's bad enough they've just had a match and they come out and bully him into doing another match, but don't mock the guy. It's a real negative aura or something to these guys. They're not just they're not just people who want to beat people up to win. These are guys who are out to destroy an industry. As I said before, it's a uh, playground mentality, you know. It's just like, you know, the three big screaming kids just want to take everybody's pocket money, you know, behind the bike sheds. You know, and don't forget Martin Stone's included in that. I said three, that's now four. That's all right, Dave. It's all right, Yestin. It's all right, Joel. Your guy's going to get it. Morales is looking smug. I'm not sure he should be because Diamond is starting to take it to the... Oh. No, he's not. Reese, cover, two. Oh, Diamond kicked out on two. Reese with a very arrogant cover on oh, Morales is now. You get yourself back over there, mate. I don't want to hear what you've got to say. Yeah, he's getting a little close for my yeah, comfort. Yeah, no, don't worry about it. He can get as close as it wants. Yeah. It looks like, as I said, Diamond thought like he was, looked like he was getting an advantage over Yestin Reese. Reese now yeah. punishing this kid. I mean, whatever happens on the outcome of this match, those two guys right there, the younger blood, They've done very well. And you know what? I want to shake their hands after this because I think they've done amazing. And now, what? Now Redmond's looking over yes, here. You shut your mouth! Get back in there, mate. See, all three of these agenda stars, I don't know what we want to call them stars, but Reese, Redmond, and Morales all catching glances over here. The number one contender for the world heavyweight title, Leroy Kincaid. As I said earlier, we are just 21 days away from European Uprising at the Birmingham NEC. That is going to be the deciding number, man. I can't wait. We're going to see a big change in British wrestling. I can feel it coming in my bones right now. This agenda, this faction is going down. Yes, Dave. Smile, mate. Smile, yeah. You don't even know what I'm talking about, but it's going to happen. A real smug, yeah. smug look on his face today as Morales, isn't he? Yeah. Really pleased with himself, beating up two kids. My knee from Redmond. Well, Redmond is quickly going to the top. He senses blood what? here. I, I, I don't, I don't know. Oh, what's? Where, where's he going? Oh, Rage has had enough. What? Where's Rage has had enough. Oh, this ain't right. Oh, this ain't right. This is. Well, we need to. Someone's, we need, got, someone's got to stop this. Diamond's in there on his own now. We, we need to. It's over. We need to get some. Look, come on. If you want to make it bad enough, just pin the guy, all right? Well, there's that big boot into the Jeez. German suplex. That finishing move for Reese and Redmond. Redmond cover, and there's three. And well, thank God that's over. Yeah, all right. Well done, bravo. Bravo, three guys against one, you Where's big men. Reach? Well done, I'll shake your hand if you wasn't such idiots. Yes, yeah, it's all right. Well the done, agenda. bravo. Well, hang on now. Yeah, it's my fault, it's my fault. I tell you what's my fault, mate. Hey, this title's changing. 
This title is gonna change. One, two, three, four of you punks are gonna go straight to hell. Oh, let's just, just take it easy. Take it easy here. Uh, What's respect. happening now? Uh, some spitting on. Come on. on Come off. on. We don't need this. It's completely uncomfortable. Just let the guy down. Just leave him. I'm looking over here at, at you, Leroy. What? No, Leroy, no, come on. It's three on one. If Le Leroy Kincaid is heading over to... Well, this is, a, this is a mistake. They are trying to lure him in. And Leroy, I think, is just... He's fallen for the trap. Oh, God, this is going to get ugly. It's going to get ugly. Standoff between the leader of the resistance and three members of the agenda. Well, these guys, are, what, are, what are they plotting? Diamond is being helped out of here by referee Chris Roberts. They are surrounding Leroy Kincaid. Kincaid says he's going to take them all, and this is a mistake. Kincaid is three weeks away from that match with Martin Stone, the biggest match of his career. Oh, hang on. Well, Reese and Redmond are leaving. This message is for you. I'll tell you what you remind me of, mate. A big, fat, schoolboy bully that can do nothing but beat up other people after they've had a match. We're supposed to be scheduled for a match in one hour. Forget that. You and me, right now. Kincaid is challenging Morales to a match right here. Now, even that's got to be a mistake. I mean, Reese and Redmond may have gone backstage, but the fact that they went voluntarily. I don't know what to make of this. Kincaid is saying he's going to take on Morales. Referee is coming back out here, but we know Reese and Redmond are probably just the other side of the curtain. I'm sure Kincaid knows that as well. He's by no means stupid, but... Sometimes more, more heart than anything else, Leroy Kincaid, and I'm not sure that's going to work to his advantage here. A real roadblock on the way to Uprising. Strong collar and elbow tie-up between these two heavyweights. Oh, now Reese and Redman are back out here. That didn't last long. There's a certain predictability about the agenda. Kincaid and Morales are... Oh, Kincaid, they're going to block up again. Morales has stepped out of the ring. He's got a smile on his face, but what is it? Is that fear? Morales refusing to continue this fight against Leroy Kincaid. Kincaid, what's he going to say here? What? Man, a lot of words got nothing to say? Bring it back. Don't be a chicken. Anytime you're ready, man. I'm here, I'm here. But I'll tell you what, one thing you won't get out of, ladies and gentlemen, you're scheduled for the match with me in one hour. So you can run back there, you can warm up, do some exercise, jump around, whatever you want to do, but it's going to be you and me, mate. What are you going to say about that? One hour. You heard it here first. Dave Morales and the boy Kincaid show some love for your boy. So four o'clock on this Saturday on the road to uprising.
in the worst possible way. Williams rolls through. Here comes King K. Morello didn't make the tag. Close line and another. King K has pinned Morello a couple yes. of times in recent yes. months with a spear. Will we be three for three tonight? King K nips up. And the hip hop sensation is proving tonight in Wolverhampton that resistance is not futile. Well, he's definitely got Morales and Redmond on the run here. He needs to finish them off. Look at the power and strength of King K. Now he's just fall away slam on a 300 pound human hate machine. Leroy King K. It's unreal. Inhuman power. Now, what's he doing? Oh, Kincaid is shouting spiral tap. That patented finishing move. If the spear don't get you, the spiral tap will. Kincaid launches through the air. Oh, no. Well, that's cat like agility from Leroy. But he needs to regroup and regroup quickly. Oh, and he didn't. A rush of blood to the head. And he paid the price. Action all over the arena here in the ring. It's Williams and Redmond. Williams. Look at that chaos theory. He's got it. A rolling German suplex. Williams over the top. Lanza Morales. I've not seen Doug Williams fly like that. Not since he's been at Disney World. The look on Redmond's eyes. He's right in front of us. He doesn't seem to know where he is. Kincaid knows where he is. Kincaid knows where he is. Redmond is clueless, but Kincaid is in the opposite corner. But Kincaid looks groggy too. Spear! Oh, not enough. Spear by Kincaid! Kincaid, cover, two, three, and Kincaid wins again. Kincaid wins again. The team of Doug Williams are picking up the title shot. King K has speared and pinned Martin Stone. He has speared and pinned Dave Morales on two occasions. And now he has speared and pinned Joel Redmond. A message to the agenda sent tonight. You set him up and Leroy King K will knock him down. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of this afternoon. This is a singles bout set for one ball. This is the agenda versus the resistance. Introducing first. Uh, Resistance is futile. situation for Leroy Kincaid. Uh, when we reached the Redmond failing, we thought we were uh, in a Kincaid and Morales one on one, but then Morales left as well. I think we're finally uh, going to see uh, this one on one contest. This isn't the first time Kincaid and Morales have been in the same ring as each other recently. Morales was pinned by Kincaid in that big eight man tag team elimination match. That very famous now, main event from the Art of War back in June. And they face each other again in July in Tiverton on a first ever FWA house Ladies show. Kincaid pinned him in there as well. So leads the resistance. 
Real scores to settle for Morales here. Does Kincaid have his number? You know what time it is, right? It's your boy. Done it like six. Way back, way back, something like that, right? At the burning of NEC, Leroy Kincaid will be in the fight of his life against Martin Stone. But tonight, he's going to make it to Birmingham. He first will get through 350 pounds of human hate machine. Never mind, just Mariah, they look like he may have to get through. Reese and Redmond as well. These guys travel in a pack. You know, to be the movement like the resistance, you have to have either a death wish or a huge amount of courage. Given the forces that are working against the resistance in the world of wrestling at the moment. Of King Cade showing here he has courage in spades. He is looking into the eyes of all three of these guys from the, from the agenda and he isn't blinking. Ladies and gentlemen, I've just been informed by the official that before the bell rings for this special main event match, Yeston Reese and Joel Redman must be away from ringside. They are actually barred from the ringside area. Oh, Reese and Redman are out. Well, that's a popular decision in the hall with all but two people, or three people. Talking about bravery, that's a pretty brave move from referee Chris Roberts. Redman and Reese are livid. They head out of here. Well, it's the only fair way this can be done. It looks like they're going to be barred from ringside on recent Redman. A little too close for comfort there. So here we go, the crowd are pumped up. We are ready for the main event of day one at the London Expo. On this road to uprising. And a seething hatred that continues to bubble between Leroy Kincaid and Dave Morales. Gonna explode into life once more here in the heart of the nation's capital. Oh, Mikey Kincaid instantly picks up Morales and a huge body slam and already the big man is reeling Morales out in the corner look at the agility from Kincaid it's for an early cover maybe too early talk about hard hitting physical action the traditional British style how we do all our sports in this country and wrestling is no exception, a fine tradition here. It's a tradition that Leroy Kincaid and the resistance at least are trying to maintain and to update for the 21st century. Whereas so Morales and Reese and Redmond, Martin Stone, all of the agenda are hoping to do nothing but destroy the industry, to use it as a stepping stone. Morales gets his boot up. Kincaid was charging into the corner to get him and out. This brutal, ruthless stomping. Animalistic is Morales. Goes without saying, Kincaid has a lot more to lose here than Morales does. Morales not in action tomorrow. Thus far, not in an announced match for European Uprising either, whereas Kincaid, obviously, 
that huge title match, the title rematch that's been months in the making. Kincaid with his first shot at Martin Stone's title at Battle Lines back in March. Only didn't win the title there, thanks to the interference of Morales, among others. Reese and Redmond as well, that was the night the agenda was formed. And here we are, seven months later, nothing has been resolved, but we may be just three weeks away from getting it resolved. Big backdrop by Morales. Morales, oh, his body weight on the stomach of Kincaid. What do you do? What do you do when a man that heavy is sitting on your chest and headbutting you in the skull? Kincaid started this match seemingly on fire. That body slam from nowhere on his huge opponent. Since then, Morales has taken control. Kincaid now trying to fight back. It's cut off by Morales there. Body slam of his own. And that was, you know, where's Morales going? Oh, Morales wearing Leroy Kincaid's cap. The mockery. So unnecessary. Mocking Kincaid's patented elbow. Sloppy cover from Morales. crowd here, some of the 40,000 people inside London's Excel Centre for the MCM Expo today, getting behind Kincaid, snap there, takes their man down, yeah, the thing when you're fighting an opponent as large as Morales, it moves that you would think are fairly elementary, normally you uh, hurt so much more, an elbow drop being a classic example, there's so much extra weight behind that, Kincaid gets his left shoulder up, that pin attempt. Everything Morales does has got that extra weight behind it and hurts that bit more than it would if it was someone else delivering the, the punishment. And Kincaid is trying to fight back, but there's no coordinated offense from him at the moment. As I said, he's Pinned Morales twice in recent months here in the FWA. It looks very much at the moment as, as though Morales may be going to reverse that trend here tonight. And even if Kincaid can escape this match without any serious injury ahead of that world title match, a psychological blow it certainly would be if Morales was to beat him here. You can almost feel Kincaid feeding off the energy. This crowd as he almost struggled to his feet with those grizzly bear-like arms. It's cutting off his, his air supply, now the leg as well. Morales almost smothering Kincaid here. Morales, another guy who wants to make it to America. That's why he's in the agenda, presumably. Already spent some time over there, training in Ohio Valley Wrestling. There used to be a, a feeder group for the world's largest wrestling company. I wonder if there's any connection there. Kincaid has been in that chin lock for a long time now. Finally breaking it. Oh, Kincaid picks up Morales, side suplex. This has got to be Kincaid's chance to get back in here. The thing with Kincaid, I've talked about it before, but the explosive offense he has means it, you can think you've got him in a corner and at a moment's notice, he can come back to life and finish off a match. He may be about to do it here, there's the authentic version. A Leroy Kincaid's elbow drop.
over again by Kincaid. I wonder how much that leg weighs. You can see the confidence growing in Leroy's eyes here. As he represents not only the resistance, but all of British wrestling against this ongoing threat, this ongoing menace that is the agenda. Kincaid is shouting at Morales to get up. Of course, at the time of recording this show, we're yet to hear back from Leroy Kincaid on the conditions that Martin Stone, oh my, DDT from Morales, conditions that Martin Stone has insisted on for that match and uprising to take place. We assume it's all going to get worked out. Close two count there. Stone insisting that should the agenda win, then that championship belt belongs to all of the agenda rather than just him. Should be a, well, an unconventional ownership for a championship belt, to say the least. Really is holding the FWA to ransom, is Martin Stone. He even said that if in what he considers will be the unlikely event that he were to lose to Leroy Kincaid. He would instantly be granted a rematch at New Frontiers, except that he wouldn't have to accept that rematch himself. Oh wait, what's this? Kincaid, fall away, slam on Morales, my God! This man never ceases to amaze me. Okay, go for the spear. What I was gonna say is, Martin Stone insisting that that rematch, if he were to lose, could be taken up by anyone who wants to represent the agenda from any wrestling company in the world. But right now, Kincaid's not focused on that. He is focused on Dave Morales and he is lining him up, lining him up, possibly for the spear, spear by Kincaid. That's how he's beaten Morales twice before. And tonight, that's how he, no, oh, what? Wait a, that's, that's Martin Stone, the world heavyweight champion. Kincaid had this one. I didn't even think Stone was here. You've got to think Kincaid had Morales beaten for what would have been the third time in recent history. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match is the result of a disqualification, Leroy Kincaid. Well, Kincaid's the winner by disqualification, which has gone down well with the crowd, but it's not how Kincaid wanted to win this, I promise you. Oh, wait, Morales, cheap shot. Now Stone is in. Well, this is his chance. This is Martin Stone's chance. He's got Leroy Kincaid where he wants him. A chance to soften him up ahead of that championship match, a European uprising. Stone like a, a rabid dog. How many punches to the face did Kincaid just take? Those were closed fists as well. He's going for the London Bridge. No, Kincaid fights back. Kincaid leads. Underneath, close line by Kincaid. Shoulder block and Stone is down. Stone is reeling. Kincaid's going to go for the spear. Oh, no. Martin Stone saw it coming, got out of there. Oh, and here come his cronies. Reese and Redman out here now as well. Well, Stone thought he was going to soften up Leroy Kincaid ahead of European uprising. It certainly didn't go to plan. Now what? Kincaid countering his way out of the London Bridge, almost hit Stone with a spear. It was almost spear, uh, Stone sorry, who came off worse for wear. Wait, hang on, here comes Alex Shane and, and, and Charles Samuels. The rest of the resistance, has, it looked like the agenda was surrounding the ring. Charles Samuels, Alex Shane, the rest of the resistance. Riley's in there as well. And the, the head of product content for the FWA, Alex Shane, leading this crowd in a chant, a defiant chant against the agenda.
almost military in the way they line up. Sinister forces ever to poison this or any other wrestling promotion in the world have survived intact tonight. They didn't get the job done in terms of injuring Leroy Kincaid. But Martin Stone walked out of here holding the belt, which he believes will belong not just to him, but to the entire agenda in three weeks from now at European Uprising. At times, it must seem to Leroy Kincaid he's in a, a four-on-one fight, a handicap match to try and get this world heavyweight title out of Martin Stone's hands. But today, Alex Shane, Charles Samuels, Nick Riley, Zach Diamond, the resistance, showing Leroy Kincaid as he fights for the heart and soul of British wrestling. He is not alone. Thank <laughs> you. 